In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good afternoon, I've been um, and blessed, and I thank our, my beloved fathers, what's Abuna David and what's Abuna Daniel, uh, for inviting my weakness to be among you, celebrating uh, this great day of this holy week of Pascha. It's a uh, it's Covenant Thursday, or we call it Great Thursday. So the Covenant Thursday, we call it Great Thursday, and many events happen in, in this day. As you notice, during that week, we go day by day, uh, following the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ, seeing what he offered for us, preparing for his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Quickly, let us uh, review what happened today. So in the morning, of course, we celebrated how our Lord Jesus Christ celebrated the Passover with the disciples, then he celebrated the Last Supper. He found and instituted the great mystery and the great sacrament of Eucharist. Then he washed the feet of the disciple. Then he went out and prayed. And he came twice and three times, found them sleeping. And then while he was praying the last time, uh, the, the chief priests and, and the officers and the soldiers came and Judas kissed him. And uh, the illegal trial started at night. And then we see how Judas kissed him. And then we see how Peter denied him. And uh, he continued to be kept until he will be tried again tomorrow, God willing, and then he will be crucified tomorrow. We call today Covenant Thursday. Um, I'm not going to give you a sermon. I'll just share with you a few points that I heard from um, our Father, His Holiness, spoke to others about this day a few years ago. And he said, uh, um, this year is a Passover, I'm sorry, this week is called the Passover. And Passover, we're passing over from weakness to strength. We're passing over from sadness to joy. We're passing over from superficiality to depth. So in this week, everyone has a target or has a goal. Maybe there is a common goal to all of us, of course, celebrating salvation, but maybe for every one of us, there is a goal that maybe we work on it and we can relate to it more. So uh, Covenant Thursday, it's not only because that our Lord Jesus Christ did the Last Supper, but we have more than one covenant. So we'll mention only three for the sake of the time. So the first covenant is the covenant of humility by washing the disciples' feet. I, I just like that tradition in our church. I like that right in our church. When the fathers, they go down and wash the feet of the, the, everyone in the congregation and bless them, imitating our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Master and our Leader. It's a great right teaching us humility. Our Lord Jesus Christ took the water and he washed the feet of the disciples. And that was the last lesson before he went on the cross. And he wanted to be the last lesson to the disciples and to us all, because on the cross, he completely denied himself. But before he went on the cross, he wanted to teach the disciples and want to teach us all what is the real meaning of service. Service is denying oneself. Service is going out of my comfort zone and serve others. To be a leader, as he said, you have to serve everyone. It's known that a leader or the, the, the eldest or among us will not go down before uh, the younger uh, generation. But our Lord Jesus Christ taught us a completely different lesson when he went down and he washed the, the feet of the disciples. So the key that led our Lord Jesus Christ to the cross was humility. And he is teaching us the same thing with washing the disciples' feet. That's the first covenant, humility. He's teaching us how humility is what guards the gifts of God in us. God will give us many blessings. God will give us many gifts. And to guard all these gifts and to guard all these blessings, we have to be humble. Humility is our guard. Without humility, our blessings and our gifts might be stolen by evil because he always prideful and he always put all these prideful thoughts in our mind. And if I am not humble, then I have no place with Christ on the cross. 
I will not be able to crucify my desires and I cannot understand what the cross is. So humility is the first covenant here. And of course, humility is, is, is a gift or is a virtue you don't go to school for. It's something that we have to learn, of course, from our Lord Jesus Christ. We learn from our fathers, the saints, and from our fathers who are teaching us in the church. But we need this humility. Without humility, I cannot be one with Christ. That's why he said every one of us should carry his or her own cross and follow me. This is when we become one with Christ. And of course, from the beginning, our Lord Jesus Christ created the whole universe with water and spirit. Then we encounter the water first in our life in the church with the baptism. There is also another type of water, which is the tears of repentance. And then there is that type of water that shows our humility when we wash each other's feet. Not literally, of course, but learning humility that gives us life. So from the beginning, when God created everything, that was a new life. When we have the tears of repentance, that's a new life. When we are baptized, it's a new life. When we go down and wash each other's feet, that is also a new life. We taste that flavor of a new life when we become like our Lord Jesus Christ who said, learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. If I don't have humility, then the strength of God is not with me. If I don't have humility, then I am far from heaven. If I don't have humility, then I cannot be on the cross with Christ. Humility is like forcing myself or denying myself. So this is the first covenant. Today, our Lord Jesus Christ, by washing the disciples, he teaching us that first covenant, humility. He is leading us all to be humble, to be like him. And of course, we all understand from the beginning, when God created man, he created man differently. He created everything by command. He said, let it be light, and it was light. Let it be sun, it was sun. Let it be moon, and it was moon, and so on. But when he came to create man, he said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness. From the beginning, the will of God for every one of us to be his image. And after we lost that image, he came in the flesh to restore that image again. He died on the cross. He was buried and resurrected to give us this restored image in us. When do we receive it? We receive it in the baptism. So I die with Christ in the baptism. I rise up and I am a new image. That is the meaning of a sacrament. It's an invisible grace that I see, that I take. I don't see it, but I take it. So the invisible grace that I see and I take in the baptism is being the image of God. And to be truly the image of God, I have to practice humility. It is not easy, especially living in a society that is promoting uh, selfishness, promoting ego, promoting pride, promoting me, myself, and I. It's all about what you like. It's all about, it's all about what you love. It's all about what you want to do. So um, growing humility in, in our society is not easy. It's like we're going against the stream. But if I want to be the image of God, this is covenant number one today that God is giving to us. By going down, washing the disciples' feet, is telling us this is number one covenant we should all practice today, humility. The second covenant that our Lord Jesus Christ is teaching us today is oneness, unity. He established the, the great sacrament of Eucharist. He established this great mystery when he said, when you eat my body and drink my blood, you abide in me and I in you. So he is teaching us we have to live in oneness. We have to live in unity. And unity means I go from being individual to be one among, to be one with. Teaching us to transform from individualism to oneness. If I live for myself, me, myself, and I only, I will feel weak. But when we are all together, few members in the one body of Christ, we feel that power. We feel that strength. And 
I like to share with you one of the things that was read today in the morning for those who attended the first hour, the homily by Saint John Chrysostom. Something that I never thought of, and it was beautiful, and I would like to share it with you. So Saint John Chrysostom said, "He to whom belongs the power and grace says, This is my body." As the word he uttered once since the beginning, saying, "Be fruitful." and multiply in all the earth is always working in our nature to multiply. Similarly, the word Christ said about this table is still working in the churches, fulfilling the purpose of the sacrifice till this day and unto his coming. And I love that because the answers to a lot of people who are doubting the reality of the body and the blood of Christ. So from the beginning, the divine command came be fruitful and multiply and until today people are multiplying are being fruitful because of that divine command that was said thousands of years ago our lord jesus christ the same word logos god the father he said eat this is my body drink this this is my blood so the divine command that he said right before he went on the cross exists until now until the second coming when he comes and we be one with him forever in heaven. So that divine command came from the mouth of God, the Logos, our Lord Jesus Christ. Eat, this is my body. Drink, this is my blood. That means this is the body and this is the blood of Christ. And when he says, if you eat my body and drink my blood, you abide in me and I in you. That means we abide in him and he in us. So this is the second covenant, oneness. So when we want to be one, this is when we come and celebrate the liturgy and all become one in the one body of Christ and one blood of Christ and blood of Christ. It's like, like one of the saints, he said, like we are all strings in one heart. Everyone has a tune, but at the end, we all uh, bring a good melody in everyone's ear. People will see us as we read today People would know that you are my disciples when you love one another. That brings us to unity, to oneness. So uh, celebrating the Eucharist today, of course, uh, we're celebrating the foundation, the institution of this great mystery. And in that great mystery, we become one with Christ. But also, we are celebrating the oneness, the protection that we have, the support that we have, being all together in the one body of Christ. So that's another covenant that he's giving us today. So the first covenant is humility by washing the feet of his disciple. The second covenant is the covenant of oneness, the covenant of unity. When he gave us this great mystery of the Eucharist. The third and the last covenant that we will talk about today is the covenant of love. One of the things that Jesus did today uh, was this great deep conversation that he had with the disciples. As we read in one of the expositions, this is that we hear, we read four miracles in the, from the same uh, writer, St. John, the evangelist. And that is the first hour of Eve of Great Friday. We call it the Gospels of the Paraclete because most of it talks about the Holy Spirit. But part of those Gospels were uh, John chapter 17. When our Lord Jesus Christ was giving them this very deep conversation, he was talking to them very, very deeply as always. And uh, he taught us how we can be filled with his love in points, in four points. If you go back to John chapter 17, you would see how in, in, in this conversation or this great talk that our Lord Jesus Christ had with his disciples, we can learn how we can have or we can be filled with the love of God. I'll share with you some verses from this talk that our Lord Jesus Christ gave to his disciples. It's, again, it's John chapter 17. So in verse 11, he said, Now I am no longer in the world but these are in the world and I come to you Holy Father keep through your name those whom you have given me so number one is the name of Christ 
one of the one of the very good things, one of the very powerful prayers that the early fathers of the church teach us is the Jesus prayer. Very sure we all know it. Uh, if you all read that book, The Way of the Pilgrim, it's a great book teaching us how to fight thoughts, how to always live by the name of Christ all the time. When we recite the Jesus prayer, my Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. So the name of Christ, by mentioning it, we always fight that thought and always feel the, the presence of God among us in our mind. This is one of the ways that we always maintain that love in us. When we encounter the name of Christ always, and we feel protected by this holy, great name. That's another way to be feeling that love. The second uh, thing that he said in the same talk, Verse 14, when he said, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. So the word of God, the holy word. Do I always read the holy word in the Bible? Am I being filled with this holy word of God? Am I being guided with the holy word of God? Is my path being enlightened with the word of God? When I read the word of God, as Jesus said before, you are now clean because of the words that I have spoken to you. So number one is the name of Christ. Number two is the holy word of God in the Bible, in the scriptures. The holy word of God that we learned from the fathers of the church, the early fathers of the church and the fathers who are teaching us now. So those words would purify us and will fill us. And by the way, when we are filled, I love I love that verse, and I always say it in the book of Proverbs, when it says, a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but for a hungry soul, every bitterness is sweet. So when we are satisfied, we can loathe evil, we can trample over the sweetness of the world. But when we are hungry and we are not filled, then we actually desire bitterness. So we feel the love of God by mentioning the name of Christ all the time and by also being filled with the word of God. And he goes on, and then in verse 17, he said, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth, the life of holiness. When I live the life of holiness, and when I, when I mean, when I talk about holiness, it's not easy. In this world, to live the life of holiness, it is not easy. But as St. Paul taught us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I live this holy life, then my body becomes a, a holy vessel and the Holy Spirit would work within me. Then I can enjoy the love of God in me because I am being the image of God. I am being what God wants me to be. I am being his will, because his will in me to be his image. So when I live this um, life of holiness, I am being the image of Christ. A lot of people sometimes they come and say, how do I know the will of God? And that answer actually, or that question is answered in the Bible, when St. Paul said, the will of God for you is your sanctification. To be sanctified by God. To be a holy vessel. As St. Paul said in his first epistle to the Corinthians, he said, Don't you know that you are, your bodies are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in you? So when I mention the name of Christ always, when I always read the word of Christ, when I try to live the life of holiness, I'm not saying this is easy, by the way. It's, a, it's an ongoing struggle that we have to work on it daily because we are tempted daily. We are tempted hourly. We are tempted all the time, if not by our senses, by our thoughts, by people around us, by society, by environment, by social media, by devices we have in our hands. We are always tempted. So to keep this holiness in us, it's not easy. But I can do all things through Christ. But when I live this holy life, I feel the love of God in me. And the last uh, point to how to be filled with the love of God, he goes on in this beautiful sermon or talk with the disciples and he said that they all may be one as you father are in me 
and I in you, that they also may be one in us. The unity with our Lord Jesus Christ, the unity with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and, and transform the bread into the body of Christ and the wine into the blood of Christ. We all partake of the body and the blood of Christ and we, became, we become one. And this is one of the ways we actually experience this love of God in, in, in us. So the three covenants that our Lord Jesus Christ is giving us today, the covenant of humility by washing the feet of his disciples, the covenant of unity and oneness by establishing and instituting the sacrament of the Eucharist and the covenant of love. He is giving us ways how to be filled with his love by mentioning his name always, by reading and being sanctified with his word, by living the life of holiness and by always being one like him, the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. When, when we remember those things, we need to work on it. The, the good things about the readings that the church is offering us in every occasion is to read and learn, to read and apply, to read and live those occasions, not just come to church and read and um, that, was a, that was a great service and that was a great day, it was a great occasion and just go home. No, we need to, as I said at the beginning, it's a Passover week. We pass over from darkness to light, from sadness to joy, from superficiality to depth. Um, one of the commands that God gave to his disciple once, he said, lunch into the deep. So let us always lunch into the deep. Um, nowadays, because of social media, because of the devices, um, a, lot of, a lot of us are struggling to lunch into the deep. Uh, just by scrolling up, not able to, to read more than a few lines, not be able to uh, focus on, on, on a clip longer than two minutes. Uh, our attention span became very, very short. And to launch into the depth became very difficult, became very challenging. So let us all try to be deeper when we come to church, celebrate all these occasions, to pass over from superficiality to launch into the deep. So today, celebrating in depth the Covenant Thursday, let us remember those three covenants, the covenant of humility, the covenant of oneness, and the covenant of love of God by mentioning his name always, by reading the words of God, by living the life of holiness, by always trying to be one with Christ by being his image all the time. If anything that we all need to work on is always be the image of God. Because remember, this is the reason why Jesus is going to be on the cross tomorrow. To restore that image in us. The image that Adam and Eve lost from the beginning. He came because he loves us. He came and died to be buried, to be resurrected, to restore that image in us. So the least thing that we, every one of us can do is to actually live like Christ alive. That's why I like uh, this uh, theme when they say, what would Jesus do? If every one of us just think before we talk, before we do anything, before we watch anything or listen to anything, just ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? That will help us a lot to be the image of God, which is the role of God in us. May these days we always be fruitful, be holy, and may God bring all these days, many, many years for every one of us, and we go in depth in those covenants with our Lord Jesus Christ, and glory be to him forever, the ages of all ages. Amen.